Hi folks, this is Jonathan Wilson, Guitar Vials Inc., the guy behind the Togu Man Guitar Vial, and today I am just going to walk through the installation of one of these LR Bags Lyric Pickups, um, a pickup that was only available only in the last couple of years, and I found it work out very well. Anyway, uh, to cut to the chase, uh, we're taking this uh, modified pickup here, Actually, this is the whole package. I'm going to explain it here in a second. This is the uh, pickup itself. And this is the uh, volume here. And this little cylindrical thing here, which I'm going to screw back together in just a second. I just was giving it a little bit of a test here to make sure that my wiring job is good. Um, essentially, this is has a jumper wire on it, so I've removed the battery cable, which we normally have little snappies on there and we usually have this little guy that goes inside the instrument this little guy here well we're not going to use that one because uh, we are going to do an outboard power supply which i find preferable to uh, putting an actual you know battery package inside that kind of sucks actually so we've got this little guy here now it's a uh, modified lyric pickup so i kind of went to the board and jumped it and it will work with this little gray box here and this little gray box I got a little Proco cable here in this case and it has a uh, TRS plug on e either end tip ring sleeve okay so it's not your typical mono cable it's a tip ring sleeve for those who don't know what TRS is anyway so what we're gonna do is um, first of all I just had to give it a little bit of a, a test so I plugged it in and I just want to give it a little I guess we're working, so it means it's it's good. So for now, let's uh, let's abandon this part of the assembly, and we're going to put this into the instrument. Now, over here, and I let me make sure that you can see what I'm working on. Is and if I can get in closer, I would, but we're just going to have to take it for what it is. This here is the uh, where we have the jack go in. Um, it's the jack hole. Actually, that sounds like an insult, calling somebody a jackhole, but this is actually the jackhole. So, we are going to, I'm going to take this long uh, thing, you could take a long screwdriver if you like, uh, as long as it's something small enough to fit into that, that, uh, that hole there. And this is the way that I guide this thing in. So, I'm going to come in through the side port here, and let me make sure that that's visible from where you're looking at. It looks like it is. So. I'm on the, in this case, I'm on the uh, base side port here. And we're going to take this little guy here. I'm going to stick it in so that I can get it somewhere in that ballpark of where the, the side port is. Now, once I can just kind of slide it in just far enough, we're going to gently guide that uh, jack out of the jack hole. That'll keep us uh, from, you know, doing too much ship in the bottle and too many cuss words along the way. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the little plug assembly that I have here and it uh, consists of the usual thing that you would see on a lot of electric guitars, which is, let's see if you can see what I'm talking about here. This is the uh, football jack. This is the, um, there's a nut and a sort of a, like a outer washer. And then I've got these four star washers that go inside. Now what we do is we take these four washers. Let me see if I have another similar thing. Yeah, we can, we can do this. Um, and we're going to take first the little stack of the four washers and we're going to put them on the threaded end of this this assembly here, this little barrel jack. And then we're going to take the football jack plate and we're going to put that there. So then we're going to put this uh, little guy on the outside, the just the flat uh, washer, and then we're going to screw this on. Okay, so now I'm going to finger tighten that as far as it'll go. This way we don't, if we could almost fit the rest of the assembly through the hole for the outside, but generally that, that gets a little dicey and we don't want to damage the unit. So I'm kind of taking the inside out approach rather than the outside in.
in this case. I took a little uh, crescent wrench here and um, tightened this little guy up here. Next is uh, this is the actual pickup right here. So I'm going to try to come in a little closer now. Hopefully you can kind of see what we've done so far. So in review, I'm going to tip this thing tripod sideways here. We've got this little football jack. I'm going to drill a couple holes and kind of line that up. This is where the leg peg goes in, so we don't have to worry about that, that guy there. So we've got this assembly now, and it looks something like that. All right. Moving forward. We're going to go over. I'm going to actually go for another view. We're going to come around the other side here. And... This view looks something like this. So now we're over here at the, um, the base side. And the two things are going to happen. One is we're going to attach this pickup under the bridge on the base bar. And I'm going to explain that in a second. The other thing is this little guy here is going to get a little sticky tape on it. And it's going to be put inside this on the side of the side port there. So we have a nice little neat little corner. It's almost like it was designed for it, um, oddly enough. Uh, excuse me as I grab a little demonstration caulking tape here for a second. This is what the base bar looks like on the inside. And there's a flat area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy here, and I can't really pull it out that far, but... Essentially, we're going to try to, st I can't even get it close enough to demonstrate the point, but we're going to stick it right on there from the inside. Now, it's a little tricky thing to do uh, if you don't have the right tools, and we'll, we'll um, kind of talk about ways you can improvise on that theme. We're going to get it to be right underneath and in the middle. So where this little round thing here is, it's going to be right underneath the foot. So we're going to have a, it just kind of stuck like right there. And oh joy, oh joy, high-end production here, I know. Anyway, um, so the first step is we're going to get this and we're going to stick it in there. Now, I have happened to have, hopefully somewhere in here, And at this point, we'll take a coffee break for just a moment as the cars and garage doors collapse and go up and down. So. Okay, so. You're having your coffee break, right? Still there? Okay, good. And of course, this is one of those moments when I wish I had located this one tool before rolling, but you know how that goes. I happen to have this sort of medical hemostat, but I'm going to tell you another way you can do this, okay? Um, first of all, I'm going to grab it and, it and I'm going to stick it in there like this, okay? So what, what I'm going to do first, but there's another way you can do this if you happen to have uh, some sort of bendable like piece of uh, screw up sheet metal here. Let me see if I can find something just to make that point. Sorry about the uh, slick production here. I just work under incredible time constraints. Um, 
and preparation is just not preparation H around here. So if I had something like this, with a little sort of an angle, if we put some double sticky tape on there, what we can do is stick the double sticky tape on the bottom and then guide it in and do the best we can. What I'm going to do though is uh, I'm using these sort of curvy hemostats here, if you can see that. Okay, now that all the distractions are gone, hopefully, we can get down to the business of peeling off these little sticky papers here on either side. Okay, now remember, I'm going to tr what I'm want to do is go in a corresponding spot directly underneath the bridge, and it's going to be on the bottom of the um, and I'm getting a pretty good position already. Now we have to, so we kind of go in there, get it to stay in place, and then go in there with our hand and, and make sure it's really well secured. And that looks pretty good for me from the outside. Let me see if I can give you a shot. Now don't get too dizzy as I look at this because I'm going to turn the camera a little bit to the sideways. And maybe you could see that it's positioned right directly underneath the bridge. And so hopefully you've got that part of it. Okay, now the next uh, item is this guy here, the little, um, this is the little wheel here that uh, is actually the volume gain knob. And by the way, we're gonna, we'll talk about this. There's a little tiny little thing. It looks like a tiny Phillips screwdriver thing in that position there. Um, that's something that you just sort of adjust until you like it kind of thing. Uh, what I generally will do is if I had a uh, some sort of a a cable tie. Let's see if I can flip one in the kit here. And I happen to be lucky enough to find one without having to dig too far, so I think we're in okay shape. This one's a little overkill in size, so don't worry about that. But what I generally will do is I'll, I'll kind of coil the excess length and just make one coil, and I'll take this cable tie. Again, this one's a little overkill but it'll do the job. So we take this guy here and okay so I've got that all coiled up. Now what, I can, what I'll do is I'll just take a little nipper and clip that off or a nail clipper will work or whatever you might have in mind. We're gonna mount this right in here and to do that we're going to need something that comes in the packaging. This little guy here, it says important, and it shows you a little diagram of that. There's also this little stick here that we're going to use later. But on the other side of the packaging, we've got little what looks to be a spare uh, pickup mounting double sticky and two of these little um, corner mounted pieces. What I've often done in the past and I don't know that I did today, is uh, I would take a small spot of kind of wood glue and just sort of spread it over that area. We'll just give it a few seconds to sort of um, cure a little bit. This In the heat I've got today, this'll, this won't take very long at all. So the next thing is we're going to unpackage this little guy here, the one that has little green plaid patterns on it. And we're going to pick one. We don't need both of them. These are spares that they were kind enough to pack and that you might want to keep around just in case. You never know. And anyway, so I'm, I'm mounting this double sticky thing to its corresponding curve there on the little fly, this little flywheel assembly. So now I'm going to peel this back and we're going to expose the actual stick surface to the surface we want to get it into. And we position it really just kind of to the best we can. Now I kind of give it a, I put my thumb on the outside and give it a little push on it from the inside. 
Let's be careful not to get too exuberant though because the, the, uh, the uh, top is fragile. So you don't want to like yank on it really hard and pull a crack on it. Okay, but now it looks like I've got this little guy mounted in there. And we'll let's, uh, let's see what happens when we actually plug this guy in here. Now I'm going to unwrap this little Proco cable just enough to where I can, um, maybe perhaps I'll, I'll just uh, unclip this little thing here and we can comfortably get this out. I don't think we're going to need that on the other end too much. And it appears we have a working pickup with the gain knob working quite well there. And uh, so we have... Now I'm just going through just kind of any old combo kind of amp, okay? But what you're going to want to do when you uh, get into your rig, whatever you're using, and these things that are at their best, by the way, going straight into Pro Tools interfaces or into live um, situations, uh, you know, guitar amps are kind of so-so for these, so I would just, you know, put that out there. This little guy here is going to go into this. And this is sort of a presence knob, so we can hear it brightens up, it darkens up there. So we just kind of find the sweet spot that we like. And, you know, basically if it sounds good, it is good. It's really what we want. And hi, you can hear me because it's kind of part mic, so. Now, the one thing I like about this pickup is, even though it's part mic, uh, I'm going to turn that off now, um, is that it, it they, LR Bags has done a fantastic job of getting most of that real tubby sound out of the thing. So, anyway, your imaginary friend's back. Um, anyway, so hopefully um, you will have some happy playing on this thing. Uh, the next step I'm going to do, which is kind of a no-brainer, but I have to still drill a couple holes in the end and then just, you know, put the little screws that go to the little uh, jack plate and we'll have that mounted on there permanent, you know, so uh, anyway, if we've done this right, we have a little box with a, um, that's our uh, TRS cable. We've got our non-stereo cable that goes straight to our amplifier or our interface or whatever. And the uh, TRS goes also to the instrument end, so uh, you've got that. And this little box is handy because it's just an on and off box. And uh, I like it because it's kind of like a audio panic button. So if something starts to feed back, you can just stomp on the box and you're off. And, and this way when it's time to change batteries, which by the way, if you leave it on or you're, pl I mean, you're playing it and it's plugged in and it's on, uh, it will drain. But this is a little battery drawer that uh, comes out the end and you can change a little nine volt battery thusly. Anyway, uh, for more information or more guidance, uh, go to guitarviles.com, G-U-I-T-A-R-V-I-O-L-S.com. I'm Jonathan Wilson and uh, thank you for tuning in. Have an exceedingly awesome day and be inspired.